So I think it's important for us to let everybody know that we have good news today. We always bring good news, but I think the news that we have today is more exciting. You know why? Any couple can enjoy a happy marriage. Any couple can start enjoying a happy marriage if they know what to do and they are willing to pay the price. Any couple can enjoy a happy marriage. I think this is very good news. Yes. Because I've seen some people, you know, it's easy to look at other couples and think that, who these are a couple made in heaven. Ooh, these are the, couple, the perfect couple. Let me tell you something. You too can also enjoy a happy marriage. Dickens Vesna, do you know something that came to my mind this morning? Yes, sir. Um, I was thinking about the fact that Coach Princess and I, we are both business mentors and then we are marriage mentors. And then statistics show that one out of 10 businesses make it. True. This is like sort of global statistics. One out of 10 businesses make it. The rest, they fail. Guess what statistics says about marriage? Five out of 10 marriages make it. All right. Which means... <laughs> Your marriage has got five times possibility of making it as compared to a business. True that. If, if somebody is making it in business right now, what it means is that they can easily make it in marriage. How sweet is that? Yes. That is a really good... Yes. That is very good. <laughs> it's easier to make it in marriage than it is in business. You don't need to be a superstar. You don't need to have a heard some voice say, yes, the two of you should marry if you don't. Eh? You don't need, as long as the two of you make a commitment to make marriage work, your marriage can work. And it's important for me to stress this point right now to say, although both myself and Mamutoko, we are marriage mentors or someone to call us marriage coaches, we, whatever we are saying here, we are just sharing. This is general information. This is not expert advice. Those people who want to come for mentorship in marriage and relationships or premarital coaching, yes, we will put a link for you so that you can register. That is a paid program. But what we are doing here is we are just sharing for free to help each other and empower each other. There are people also who reach out to us for us to pray for them. And we are happy to do that. And to advise you a little bit, we can do that. But we cannot advise everybody custom made everyone all the time it's not possible there are too many people who need help those who want to be mentored will join our program and that is a paid program we just thought we need to make that very clear all right but what we are doing here is just to share information you can share ideas with us you can send in your charts Dickens Vesna is going to be giving us her views on what we are discussing Coach Princess will also be doing the same and we enjoy in the presence of the Lord as we learn what we are calling the four laws of marriage. Amen. This Amen. is not expert advice. Praise the Lord. We are just sharing our opinions. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. But I think that's quite sobering. One out of 10 businesses make it. Nine fail. Five out of 10 marriages make it. Five, fail. Your chances of making it in marriage are so high. If you are committed. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. So, um, let's go straight into the laws. When we talk of laws, we are talking of something that has been tried and tested. 
It's something that can work all over the world. It can work anywhere. One thing about laws is that you can decide to break the law and you fail or you obey the law and you make it. So we will take our reading from the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 24 to 25. Genesis 2, verse 24 to 25. We want every marriage to work. We want the happy homes all over the world. Genesis 2, 24 to 25. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. It's the miracle of one plus one equals one. <laughs> oh my God. So how do we do this? Number one, law of priority. Law of priority. If your marriage is not working, it means there are some laws you are breaking. If you start observing those laws, both of you, husband and wife, you are going to begin to see big differences. Now, if you are young, you have not yet gotten a partner, you need to understand this before you get married. There are laws to be obeyed. And the first law is the law of priority. Your marriage will only work if you make it a priority. <laughs> your marriage is going to work if you prioritize your partner over everybody else and over everything else. It doesn't matter you saw a vision. I think we have shared it before. That me and my wife, both, are, both of us saw visions before we said, I love you, I love you. But when we started experiencing problems in the marriage, we suddenly began to think that, hmm, did I hear from God or I heard from the devil? This woman is not for me. And what were you thinking? <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Because some people see us happy and they think, it's miraculous. Oh, just fell down from heaven. Always in love. We have had our fair share of challenges. She, at one time, she also looked at me and thought, hmm, is this my husband or maybe the devil cheated me somehow? There are some laws to be observed. Look at it this way. Before you are married, you are prioritizing your father, your mother, your sisters, your brothers, and your friends. If it happens that you already have a child or two before marrying the person you are married, you are already prioritizing your children. And now, as you get into marriage, you need to put this person first. Do you see why it's not easy for everyone? It's a law, priority. My mother, my father, my siblings, if I have children, my children need to understand that as I am now joining hands with Phyllis, we are becoming one. Phyllis comes number one before anybody else. If I do that and she does that, then we are winning. The law of priority. So number one is God's. In my list of priorities. Number two is my wife. Number three is my parents and my children. Number four is the work of God and my work and anything else you want. Number one, God. Number two, my partner. Number three, my children and my parents. Number four, my work and the work of God. There are some people who are so busy in their business and they are neglecting their partner. Some are very busy in the work of God and they think they are pleasing God. You have wrong priorities. God first, second your partner, third your children and your parents, and then the work. Hmm. Let's hear what Dickens verse 9 say and what Apostle Phyllis is saying. The law of priority. 
You want to go first, Apostle Phyllis? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, prioritizing is very important when you are married. That's why the Bible is saying the man shall leave his parents mm -hmm. and cleave to his wife. Mm -hmm. So when you are leaving your parents, it's not like uh, you are taking your bags and go at another place only, but it's, it is also the attachment mm -hmm. that you have with your parents, mm -hmm. uh, the decisions that you were deciding together with your parents, mm -hmm. uh, the, the plans mm -hmm. that you were planning together with your parents, mm -hmm. now you are no longer planning with them. Mm -hmm. You are no longer sitting down and share some ideas mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. You are now sharing your ideas with, with your wife. Mm -hmm. You are now sharing your your closest uh, deep thoughts mm. and your heart felt to your partner. Mm. Maybe you were talking too much to your mother, you were sharing mommy, this and that, a small thing, mommy, this and that. When your, your wife realized that you are sharing most of the deep things with your parents, she feels insecure because you are opening up maybe the things that, that, that are supposed to be for you and your wife only, because you are now one. So the husband must leave his parents. Yes, you must leave and go and stay somewhere, but also you must leave the attachments that you were attached to, to your parents, that anything, you would talk to your parents. They would call you aside and talk to you, you know, this and this, my son. But when you are one, you would sit together with your wife. You call your wife. When they call you, call your wife again. <laughs> <laughs> because the moment when they call you and you sit with them and your wife is out, she's not there. What, what do you think she would be thinking? Maybe you are discussing about me because I'm a new person in the family. I don't know what you are discussing there. Why am I not invited? If it is an, an important thing for the family. So also I am included because I am now part of the family. I will, be, I will feel welcomed when I am called to that meeting or to that discussion for the family. So leaving our parents, that's the same also with the wife, is the wife must also leave her, parent, her parents and cleave to his husband. So that anything that they will discuss, it's for them, the two, to build their family. So if you were also a girl of mommy, <laughs> you always say, mommy, this and that, mommy, this and that. Now you are married, you are mature. You need to, to talk to your husband. The deep things of your life, whatever is troubling your, 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 your life or your heart, you need to share it with your, with your husband. There are some women who have some, some challenges. And when they have those challenges, they run to their parents, mommy, this and that, Mommy, this and that, when you are married, you must know that you are married. So the person who is now very close to you is your husband. I, I don't say that you, you are no longer communicating with them. Both husband and wife, you should also communicate with your parents. But in most of the decisions, most of the things that were attaching you, you have to drop them out it's and priority yes that's the priority you have to know that you are now married and the two of you you are to build a family and if you don't do that if you are not interested 
in prioritizing your spouse, don't marry. We hand it over to Dickens Vesna. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Apostle. Um, well, like you said before, when you have a business, you have success one of nine. When you have marriage, you have five of ten. That doesn't mean that marriage is easier. That just means that marriage is a very serious business. Yeah. Yes, I like that. <laughs> so, like you just said before, people are coming up with all sorts of excuses why they're not prioritizing. In the heart of heart, we all know we should prioritize our partner. But there's a lot of doubts in many people's heads. They say, what if I, like the mind game, if I prioritize him and he doesn't prioritize me, then I'm doing everything, he should be doing it. So it's like this, this tennis ball is, is passing from one partner onto another, making excuses. Marriage is a partnership of two parties that come together and they agree that they will both respect, honor each other. So before you go into marriage, don't think about it that, oh, it doesn't work, I'm going to get divorced. It doesn't, because with that mindset, you have already killed it, even before you start it. Get into the mindset that you will now make it a priority and that you will exhibit loyalty to your partner. So what Mama Mutoko was saying is loyalty. Whatever I'm saying about my partner should not be said anything that if he were there, he would not be, you know, if he were heard to hear that, then I shouldn't be opening my mouth to say it. Beautiful. So whatever problem I may have, whatever I'm discussing, yes, of course, I'm going to talk to my mother. I'm, we're not saying don't talk to your mom, but don't talk to her things you wouldn't tell your husband. So we all have friends. We have intimate friends. But there are certain things that should not leave the marriage until it is discussed. Because if not, all of a sudden, you're going to be talking to your friends and he's going to be talking to his friends and then you're going to be together and then becomes a very interesting situation when you look at two people and you see how the way they talk and you know that each of them has a story on the side. And that is already a sign of a marriage coming apart. And mostly, most sad it is that these people actually love each other, but they don't know how they're supposed to be behaving. Their priorities are not straight. So first God, second spouse. And I really like what you said here, Dr. Mujoko, that the kids come and go. As mothers, for us, it is very difficult sometimes not to prioritize children. I have to say, it's very difficult. Like we actually think that as mothers, our first priority is our child. And when we don't prioritize children, when we are with the husband, a lot of us feel guilty. Like, wow, oh, I'm not taking care of my kids. I'm a bad mother if I go out with my husband and have to call a babysitter so that we can have a nice intimate dinner together. So I thought that was really, really important what you said. Because if I want a healthy environment for my child, I have to have a healthy relationship with my husband. If I don't have health relationship with my husband, how am I going to give future to my child? Because children are a challenge. We have not been born knowing how to raise children. Raising children is much more difficult than marriage. You can choose your partner, but you can't choose your kid. So you need to have a very stable base where are you going to be building your family? And that is your husband. It's not your mom. Your mom is the most important part of your life before you got married. And you're always going to love, honor and love her. And you're always going to honor and love your father. But the husband or the wife is the one who is going to give you stability, who's going to give you support, who's going to give you the garden on which you're going to plant your life. And... Most importantly, there always has to be a third party in here, in my opinion. And the third party is God. God is the glue between you. So some people say, well, how do I make now God first? Well, because God is going to make everything possible for you. Every single issue that you're going to have with your husband and you don't know how to solve it, you're going to pray to the Lord and you will get the solution. And I'm sure that apostles 
uh, Wilbur and Phyllis, this is the way they were solving the issues by praying. So if you leave the God out of the equation, you are alone. And the only person you can go to is your mom. And what if your mom doesn't approve your husband? So I believe that priority, first of all, if you're going to be in marriage, make it work. You need money, yes, but who are you going to give it to if your marriage falls apart? Is the money going to give you happiness? Is the money going to you going to hold your hand when you're sick or go with you on fabulous vacation? No, it's going to be a partner. So in good and in bad. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you so much. so much. Awesome stuff. So in concluding on the law of priority, what we are basically saying is you must be willing to sacrifice. There are some things you must let go. My wife will tell you, <laughs> you know, there's, there's so much to share. So some things we tend to forget them. But as I was thinking about these laws, my wife will tell you, there was a time when th those days we didn't have even TV. So I will go to the next door neighbors who have TV to go and watch football. <laughs> and my wife will say, but no, you can't leave me here and you go and watch football. I say, I love football. What do you want me to do? Guess what? I had to stop watching football. Up to this time now, I have the TVs. Uh, there is Netflix. There is all this. I don't even have the time to watch football again. But I stopped watching football because I wanted to please my girl. I wanted to have time with her. You need to be willing to sacrifice certain things for your marriage to work. Anyway, there's so much to say on that. Let's move on to law number two. Law number two is the law of pursuit. In brackets, cleaving. Cleaving, the law of pursuit. You need to pursue your partner with everything that is in you. You need to show that your partner is everything to you. Of course, I know there is God first, but then your partner. Remember, marriage is not built on emotions. Many people make a mistake. You are going to have a honeymoon probably for 10 years or less. After that, in fact, for some people, honeymoon lasts six months. After that, you begin to realize that, hey, uh, marriage is not just honey, honey, sit, sit, can we sleep, can we touch each other, can we hug? There is work to be done. The wife has children to breastfeed. <laughs> she has to be committed. You, you are busy doing other things as well. You need to be having the cleaving aspect. You need to be knitted to your partner, regardless of what is going on. Emotions will come, emotions will go. But you need that commitment to say, regardless of what's happening, I'm going to keep being united with my partner. That is why most online and distance relationships do not work. So the law of pursuit is actually linked to the law of priority. Stop thinking that you are married to a wrong person and start working on your marriage. It will be very easy for you to look at others who are in love and you're like, wow. Oh, how I wish that woman was my wife. She's very respectful to the husband. See how they hug each other. See how the husband does this. See how, no, the grass always looks greener on the next door neighbor. Guess what? Everybody looks good when they are far away. When you get closer to them, that's when you will see that mm, eh, Mamutoko is doing very well. <laughs> so don't waste your life moving from one woman to another, moving from one man to another, that one whom you have, cleave, stick to them. Praise the name of Jesus. Let me leave uh, a chance to Dickens Vesna and Apostle Phyllis to share. Pursuit, cleaving. Do you think we should go back to the scripture and read uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse mm -hmm. 24 to 25? Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined together to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, but they were not ashamed. Joined together, cleaving. The law of pursuit, the law of cleaving. Marriage has to be built the same way you do to buildings. 
you have to be committed. When you know that you are one, mm -hmm. even for people who are outside, mm -hmm. it will be very difficult to come and say some negative things about your husband mm -hmm. or negative things about your wife. Yes. Because they know that you are one. Mm -hmm. So a man needs to, to work on his on his relationship with, with his wife mm -hmm. to the extent that uh, brothers, sisters, mother, and father-in-law, they would know that these ones, you can't separate them. Yes. And the same to the woman who is married. The, the sisters, the brothers, the mother to that woman, the father to that woman should know no, not being by being told, but knowing definitely that these two you cannot separate them yes. because of the way you cleave to each other, yes. the way you love each other, mm. the way they will be observing. When your husband calls you, they will be observing how you react, how you respect. Are you ready to save him? Mm. Are you ready to listen to him? All those things they'll be observing and seeing some loopholes as a, a, when they are far and they know that uh, this one, we can, we can do whatever we want. <laughs> so we need to be very strong so that everybody will know that these ones, they are inseparable. We can't play with the wife. The husband will be in for it. We will be in for it because of the husband. Mm -hmm. When we play with the husband and do some other things, some trick things, the wife will be against us. So it should be known because of the way you cleave to each other. It shows that you are one in mind, one in soul, one in spirit. Whatever you do, there is oneness. Hmm. It Amen. should be seen openly. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. So... Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you can see that when, we, when it comes to marriage, the law of pursuit, the law of cleaving, you are not playing and you need to renew your love every day. Yes. You can't, you can't say, I showed you a lot of love yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need to be committed and consistently united to your spouse. And let me also mention this. Some people think that when you are good in bed, Ah, your marriage is going to work. Being in bed is just one small fraction of what happens in marriage. You can't say I'm good in bed, so I'm sharp. Or I'm good in communication, so I'm sharp. You need to be an all-rounder. Do everything to become an expert lover to your lover every day. Not last year I did this for you. No, every day. Dickens Vesna, the law yes. of pursuit. What came to my mind right now was how important it is how we speak about our partner. Whatever we do, we should not be talking negatively about our partner outside our community, okay? Even to him, I mean, there's always a way you can express something that you don't like try to do that because you're not always going to be happy you can't i mean the oneness has to be built and if you're right now in a situation when you find yourself arguing every day it means that something is happening that is bothering you so when you let that unhappiness pour out of your relationship and the way you speak about your husband to your friends can reflect that. Your friend will naturally try to convince you that your husband is not good for you because you're complaining about him. So it's not your friend's fault. It is your fault complaining about your husband to your friends. That is not the place to complain about a husband. Don't do that. Because as soon as you cross that line, phew. so when somebody asks you, how is your marriage doing? You say, great, we're doing great. We're working on it. You know, we're tough. We're one. Yeah, go us. Even if it's not true, because the more you declare it, the more it becomes true. It's not you not being realistic or putting blind on your eyes. No, it is you saying, no, I'm not going to declare my, my marriage isn't working or I have problems. 
So you stick to your husband or to your wife, no matter what. Your friend comes and says, well, your wife the other day, she was like, da, da, da. you say, I'm sorry. I didn't see anything improper. What are you talking about? Why do you speak to this about my wife? Stand up for her. Yes. There will be people, there will be family members who will be mm-hmm. looking at her like, hmm, it is your job to be her prince on the white horse and say, yo, sister, this is my wife. She's my princess. She's my queen. She's my everything. You don't like it? I'm sorry. But you have a problem? Take it with me. But I picked her. So remember, you know, for us girls, it is very important that our husbands do that. Especially if you're coming from two different marriages and now you're making a third one or making your communion. You have to protect your partner from the former spouses and from the, for- and from the kids from other marriages. It is your duty to do that. You have to be loyal to your partner. Because if not, it is very difficult. People have, a, you know, they will feel uncom- subconsciously like, is this really working? Does he really love me? You know, so the unity is built how you treat each other in public, how you stick to each other, how you talk about each other, and how you stand up for the other one when he or she is not around. And especially when she's around. Make an opportunity. Wow, how can I today make my wife feel good about being with me? How can I do that? How can I show my husband that he's proud of having this kind of wife? What can I do for him? So I think this is very important. Thank you. Powerful. Thank you, Tikkunas Vesna. Amazing stuff right there. So what I'm getting from you is that as a partner, you need to close doors. Yes. Amen. We need to speak positive about our partner. And I like that because it's not everybody you are going to be telling that you are having problems in your marriage who is going to solve them. There are people who go around looking for problems in other people's lives. Then they go broadcasting about it everywhere. Amen. And what we are saying is, yes, you can talk to your mentors. You can talk to your pastors. That's fine. As long as you trust them, of course. But you can't be meeting everybody. I like the fact that you are saying, if you go tell your friends every day, Tell my wife, my wife. Yes, you are opening the door for them to help you to destroy the marriage. But yes. if you say, oh, everything is fantastic. Oh, everything is good. And then you take it to God or you take it to your prayer partner or you take it to your mentor. Yes, that's important. You are getting solutions to come in, but you are protecting and then you mentioned something very important, Tignes Vesna, about blended families. That you are coming in, maybe you were married once, you are married twice, you are married thrice. Things happen in life. Maybe you are coming with a child, two or three or whatever it is. I've seen some men or some women who will have their spouse attacked by a former lover. And they are quiet. You are the one who knows that person. I don't know the person. You should help me. It just makes sense. The law of pursuit. So you see, if you don't do that, your partner will begin to to wonder, is this person really with me? Or maybe he or she is still with the ex. Why is he not not protecting me? Why is he not joining in? You are just keeping quiet. You know, your partner can actually be beaten by your ex and you are watching. What are you saying? You need to protect your partner. It's it's both ways. All right. Thank you so much. Let's move on to law number three. We also want to hear comments. I can see Utla Arungwa Wanano is watching us on Facebook. Thank you so much, Utla Arungwa. The Lord bless you. Let's have more comments. Let's have more interaction. Law number three is share everything. Share everything. The Bible says you shall become one. All right. You share a life. You share children. You share food. You share the bed. You share money. You share everything. But do you know what the devil has done? There are people who have passwords even to their SMSs on the phone. Somebody was jokingly saying some people have a password even on their calendar. So that the spouse cannot know what's happening in the calendar. 
The moment you see that happening, then you know there is a big problem. You share everything. You must stop saying my, mine. It's our, ours, we. Praise the name of Jesus. Marriage is not about independence. If you want independence, we have to be honest with you. Marriage will not work for you. If you want to be independent, then be single and be happily single for the rest of your life. It's okay. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it's better not to marry. It's better not to marry. But if you have a burning desire, to marry. Okay, go ahead and marry. That's what Paul says. It's actually better to be single. That's what Paul was saying. So if you want to be married, you cannot come in with an independent spirit. In marriage, we are interdependent. That's why prenuptial agreements seem to make sense to rich people, but I don't think it promotes a happy marriage. When I know that Mamutoko is doing some things that I don't know about, she is making money that I don't know about. She is, you know, having friends and what that I should not know. Independence will destroy your marriage. So you want your marriage to work? Stop being independent. Become interdependent. It shouldn't be an issue for my wife to have my phone. It shouldn't be an issue for me to have her phone. Let's be one. We share. So you want your marriage to work. You have been putting passwords for each other. You are not yet ready. When you are ready, you will. I will know my wife's password and she will know my password. She will know what I know and I will know what she knows. That's what to do when you want marriage to work. If you don't want to do that, it means you are not ready. You are actually breaking the law of sharing. You are one. One means one. God's princess. <laughs> it's, it's so deep when we talk about oneness. Because sometimes even clothes, I can even put on his jacket and no one will ask me, why are you putting on his and jacket? And I do the same. <laughs> 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 so you just feel what you want to take because we are one. <laughs> yeah. I can take a jersey and put on. It's only the shoes because we have different shoe sizes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what love is all about. So we need to, to show that oneness in everything that we do. Mm -hmm. We need to show it. So when you are one, in everything that you do, even your life, it will be sweet. Yes. Because the two of you, you know that everything is for us, not for this one is for him, this one is for him. No. You know that these things are for us and you use them as it is for yours, not for one person. I, I see some people in marriage Maybe the, the husband wants to go to school to further his education. And they have competition with the wife because the wife also says, I also want to, to have, to further my education. And the money to do that is not enough. I have seen some couples fighting he wants to be educated and leave me not being educated. Uh, he wants me to be embarrassed. When your husband is educated, you are also educated. Yes. When your wife is educated, you are also educated. Mm -hmm. Because what he knows is what you know. Mm -hmm. I tell you, I am not a lecturer. <clears throat> but if I'm given some work to mark right now, <laughs> or even to read something uh, on the level of, of, of what, master's or PhD, you'll be surprised, Yes, I tell you. Because what he knows is what I know. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to school, but 
the information that I have is just equal to what you. You went to school. Like <laughs> you mean you didn't go to I school mean, like I, me? I didn't go. But you went to, to school. <laughs> that big PhD. I yes. don't have a PhD. Right. right. But that is only uh, formal. But in the reality, mm. what I carry mm. in me. Mm. It's equal. It's equal because we are always <laughs> sharing. We are always talking. We are always discussing. Yes. There is nothing I want to know that she doesn't know. There is nothing she wants to know that I don't know. So even all the courses she has studied, she will be telling me, this is what we are learning. Oh, our lecturer was saying this. Oh, what do you think about this? So I end up knowing what she is learning. Mm -hmm. And she also ends up knowing what I am learning. That's oneness. That's what she's saying. Because yeah. we share everything. Yeah. Yes. If he comes from work, he tells me this is the issue. Mm. It's like this. Some of the things I can even help to solve. To solve, mm. <laughs> not mm. having the PhD, mm. but yes. I can tell you, no, this one you can do this and that, mm. and he's out. Mm. <laughs> and it's sorted. <laughs> yes. We are best friends. <laughs> so it's amazing. Mm. Don't waste your time fighting with your husband. Mm. Don't waste your time fighting with your wife mm. what she knows it's a benefit for you yes. what he knows it's a benefit for you Hallelujah. as long as you are one you share everything yes true because I, oh, even what whatever you you'll be doing you can you can do it together uh before before he became a pastor I was a pastor. Mm -hmm. So some other challenges or some things that you would meet, it was like he was a pastor mm -hmm. because I was telling him mm -hmm. this and that you can find it. Mm -hmm. In the wake of God, there's this and that, there's this and that. Mm -hmm. So he grew up or, or he was mature in a faster way. Mm -hmm. Some people were still thinking that uh, this boy, but to <laughs> me, <laughs> I knew that he's no longer a boy, that one whom they thought he was, mm -hmm. because I educated him. Mm -hmm. When we were talking, when we were sharing, mm -hmm. I've been giving him information mm -hmm. that was above the qualification of being a pastor. Yes. Actually, mm -hmm. until now, there are times when I, I say to her, honey, you went to Bible school. I know I also went to Bible school, but you, you went to Bible school for three years. Eh? So I, I respect who she is. When I married her, she was my pastor. Today, she decides to submit to me as the leader of Leadership in Christ Ministries. But the truth of the matter is I benefit a lot from her. I could have made a decision to say, you are my wife. You have to listen to me. You know, I'm the head of this. Head of where? I still ask her, honey, what do you think about this? She has so much experience in ministry. And I learn from her. Happily, you can learn from each other. It's to your benefit, whatever your partner knows. And do you know something? Me becoming a pastor, by the time I got ordained in 2010 to become a pastor, I already knew a lot of things about pastoral ministry. Some people think being a pastor, you know, you're just putting on a suit and people are giving you eggs to eat. <laughs> ministry is tough. Let's face it. It's tough. Pastors who are listening to me, you know what I'm talking about. Ministry is tough. You wouldn't choose being a man of God. You wouldn't choose being a woman of God. Before I came across my girl, well, I didn't want to be a pastor, but I didn't know how tough pastoring is. But when I fell in love with him, I started seeing things that I would not have wanted to see. Some of the so-called pastors, what they do, the way they do things in a, in a more than hidden way. But I was still a believer. And they would come to me and say, small boy, uh, you are marrying a pastor. Do you know what you are putting yourself into? <laughs> I thank God for grace. God does his things in his own way. But what we are saying is, yes, now we are serving God, both of us as ministers, but we do it with understanding and we do it helping each other as one. When you are one, even the devil cannot separate you. Your friends cannot separate you. Demons cannot separate you. Your children can't stop separate you. Your parents can't separate you. Your siblings can't separate you. We have to be one. Dikinas Vesna. Yes, actually... 
um, my, my story, my husband's story is very similar to yours in the fact that um, many years ago we were, when we were deciding to come to Tenerife, Spain, we moved from Slovenia, we moved, we completely changed life. So we decided and we went as a family. We made a decision together. It wasn't me saying, I'm going to Tenerife or, you know, him saying, it was sitting down and saying, what are we going to do? This is our situation. So we planned, we prepared, and we went. And we both changed our careers. And it so happened that I have a beauty salon where I use a lot of medical equipment. And he is now engineer who repairs medical equipment. So our jobs are very intertwined. You know, like he has his job and he's amazing. He's he is a machine guru. Honestly, this man is 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 incredible. I when, when before I was married to him, I used to know how to repair things. Now I don't even want to do it anymore because he does it so fast and so efficiently that I'm, you know, why would I want to do this when my husband can just come and solve a problem? So, and. It, it is wonderful because I have my business and he has his business, but we are constantly working with each other, you know? Um, maybe I'm taking advantage of the fact that my husband is engineer, you know, like something breaks and I call him, <laughs> 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 you know? And so it's my list. And then I'm like, honey, you know those things in my salon? Do you think you would have time? And, like, and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm like, Honey, <laughs> so, so, um, but it's really great because I, I always, I openly say it and I admit it. If it were not for my husband, I could not be running this business because having somebody so dependable, so reliable, so honest and professional as my husband and my even business partner in a sense, you know, even though he works for a company that prepares these things, but we are partners. I'm telling you, it is invaluable. It is invaluable. It is invaluable that you can come home and you can speak to your partner about your day and he understands what's going on. And he says, oh, so we have this issue. Um, what if we change this? What if we put the lights there? And, and I'm like, oh yeah. Or I say, honey, I have this issue. I have these things. And he's like, okay, well, let's make this let's make this a uh, piece of furniture and then you can move it around and oh i've seen this in the other salon what if i were keeping my stuff to myself and wouldn't be telling him about my day and i wouldn't tell him about my issues and he would be doing the same and i would be just complaining to my friends about how frustrated i am how nothing is working do you see the difference yes um so I think, I mean, I don't think, I, I am super feeling blessed by being able to do that. And at the same time, my husband also is my partner reading the Bible and studying. The first thing, the first idea that occurs to me when I open the Bible and I start fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, I go to him and I say, you will not believe what I just found out, you know? And the first thing he does when he finds something exciting, when he's studying, he comes, hey, you know what? I was just listening to, this is so cool. You gotta listen. So like you were saying, even though I'm not learning engineering so much these days, mm -hmm. um, I do have a little bit of knowledge of, you know, uh, machines and programming and I see him being challenged and I sit down and say, honey, how can we solve this? Do you, do you need a better machine? And he's like, yeah, but it's too expensive. And I say, listen, don't worry about it. Let's put the money together and we'll buy it. You know, we are family, just like you are family. So families work together. We say we are a tribe. Yes. You know, so... Even when the kids, when my son is like, I'm like, listen, we all form a part of this. So if this is our garden, we're going to be eating what grows. You know, if somebody has to water, somebody has to plant, somebody has to go pick the seeds. And, you know, this is how I see the family should be working with love, compassion, understanding, 
a lot of sacrifice. But at the end of the day, what are we sacrificing really? A, a little pleasure for what? For, for harmony, for respect, for feeling close to each other, for having that comfort to know that when I'm in trouble, I know there's somebody there I can go speak to. And he knowing that when he's in trouble, he can have somebody to speak to. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's amazing. Now we move on to um, law number four. You want things to work in your marriage. Law number four is also linked to law number three. Law number three, we were saying sharing. Law number four, we are saying transparency. I know that some, some of the things, you know, you find them, you know, uh, being on both sides. Live an open life. Live an open life. Genesis 2.25. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. It was after the sin came. So being naked was okay for both of them. Do you know, if we want to take it literally as it is, nakedness, do you know there are people who are married who can't see each other's nakedness? Like the husband is always dressed. The wife is always dressed. Even when they sleep, each one is putting on their clothes all the time. You can't see the other's nakedness. They can't bath together. The man can't have the wife saying, can I bath you? What? Ba <laughs> you, you think I'm a baby? I, I, I'll bath myself. In fact, I don't want you to come when I'm bathing. They will lock the door. You can't see each other's nakedness. That's from a literal point of view. But what's wrong with it? You are one. So your nakedness is just the nakedness of one person. Right? So let us be transparent. Naked here doesn't just mean the physical nakedness. It also means naked in everything. There is nothing hidden. Everything is clear to your partner. And I think we have already touched on that. And I would want to say to those who are coming into blended families, if you are going to be transparent enough, if you are going to be united and committed to each other enough, during those early days, Let's say the husband comes with one kid from another marriage. The wife comes with two kids from another marriage. As you are coming together, when it comes to disciplining the children, let the biological parent be the one to discipline the children. Why? It takes time for you to be knit together. Remember, it's first of all for the husband and wife to come together and then the children. So, but remember that your partner was knit to their child or their children before. And you cannot push that. You cannot force them to separate. Hey, hey, you're always with your children. Out, out, children. I want to be with my wife. I want to be with my husband. No, out of love, out of understanding, out of teaching the children so that they know that the two of you first, when you are united, you'll be able to unite everybody. It will work for everybody. So then when it comes to disciplining, don't be in a hurry. Let's assume for argument's sake, let's say Mamutoko has come with one child. I came with two children. So the child that comes with Mamutoko, when she makes a mistake, I should not be the one to discipline them because I'm still trying to be friendly to them. They don't know me that much. So I don't want to complicate things. Let her discipline. And then my two children that I come with, I also discipline them. And at a later stage, when everybody has become one family, you know, it's, it's now easier to correct, to rebuke, or even to discipline. I just thought I should bring in the issue of the blended family because we have so many blended families out there. And sometimes when we are talking about marriage, um, it's, it's very easy to say, oh, you are a virgin, you marry a virgin, and then, you know, it's just the two of you, first marriage, and then we leave other people out. But at the end of the day, God loves all of us. We are not here to condemn anybody. We are here to encourage everybody to say, even if you have made mistakes, even if you are making a blended family, it can still work. It will be slightly easier, I think, for a girl and a boy coming together and having their home, no children in the, in the process. It will be easier than people who already have a child or children coming in as a blended family. It will be more difficult, but it is still possible. <clears throat> Transparency, naked, nakedness. Coach Princess. 
Ah, trans transparency is something that is very crucial because you are one, you should not hide anything. And many marriages, they break because people are not transparent to each other. Some things start to come out on their own because anything that you try to hide or suppress, mm -hmm. <laughs> it will come out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you are not expecting it, yes. it will come out. Mm -hmm. So those things, they break marriages because it's a later discovery. Mm -hmm. uh, and somebody was not prepared for those things. Mm -hmm. So if you are transparent, be transparent on everything. Mm -hmm. To the extent that even what you dream, mm -hmm. you should share mm -hmm. with, your, with your partner. Yes. Because you are now one. Mm -hmm. Those things that will be happening when you are asleep, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. you don't have control over them. Yes. But you should be able to be transparent to each other mm -hmm. and share everything that is happening. Mm -hmm. some, some people, they don't share. Mm -hmm. But you know, even dreams, sometimes we take them for, for granted, mm -hmm. but they will be saying something to us. I'm not saying that all dreams, they mean something. Mm -hmm. But that sharing, if you share it to your partner, maybe somebody will be able to realize that, ah, oh, we are standing on a wrong ground. Mm -hmm. Maybe this room where we are sleeping, mm -hmm it's not a good place. Mm -hmm. Or maybe there are forces that are fighting you. Maybe you are in a hotel mm -hmm. and you realize that the dream that you are getting from there, mm -hmm. you'll be surprised your partner also maybe will be having the share. Mm -hmm. That is the same that you have been having when you were asleep. So you would know that definitely we are having attacks here mm -hmm. and you will pray together. Mm -hmm. So some other things that you can hide, uh, they can come uh, and destroy you when you are not away because you took them for granted. So everything that happens in your life, learn to share. Even if you, you are not, uh, what can I say? You are discerning something. Maybe you, you met somebody and that person, you, you talked to him or whatever, and you descend something, be ready to share with your, with your partner. This is what I have felt when we were with this person. And you dig more. You'll be surprised that those things will prevent many dangers to you because you are sharing. Uh, one person, one person's idea or one person's strength is not enough because when you are two now, you are knowing that you are in danger. The way you fight the two of you, <laughs> it's different from you yourself only, you know, the, the thing that is happening and you are praying about it and your partner is in secret. He doesn't know it. It's different. So we need to be open to share every bit and piece of things that we are meeting in our life as a partner. Thank you very much, Coast Princess. I, as you were saying that you need to be united, it got me thinking that the Bible says one chases a thousand and two chase 10,000. The math is amazing. When you become two, under normal circumstances, if you chase a thousand, I should chase a thousand. So it means the total is two thousand. Yeah. But according to God, when you and when you are alone, you chase a thousand enemies. But when we join hands, we chase ten thousand. Isn't that amazing? Uh, Dickens Vesna, transparency. Well, I think that uh, Mama Toko said it really well and um, very well. I totally agree. We should be sharing with our partners as much as possible. Um, which brings us to an issue of time and back to priorities. 
because we are now talking about how we should be sharing things with our partners. And maybe some people are thinking, well, when am I going to do this? I get up at seven o'clock in the morning, I work all day, come home, I have kids and this and this. Well, how about this? If we don't do it, we may wake up one morning and we have no home to come back to. Okay, so as just as we schedule um, our Bible reading time and time with God, we should also put in time to be with our husband or with our wife. I don't know how much people are watching TV these days. Uh, my husband and I, we don't watch TV at all. Because any time that we have from our schedules, we try to spend it together. So if he is all day working, he's going to be listening to something at work. He comes home. If I'm at all, if I see that he's at home and he's sitting in the kitchen reading, I try to go there and I sit down and say, honey, how is everything? I try to make dinner with him so we get to talk alone without kids. Okay. And then also to have some alone time with your partner. Because when you have alone time with your partner, you will be able to be intimate in conversation. Um, I know my mom told me, she said, you know, uh, when, with my, she had a really good marriage with my, husband, with my father, even though he was, you know, they were very different characters. But she said, listen, we were married 20 years before he died. And uh, each Thursday, I think she said, or Tuesday, that was their movie night for 20 years. That was the day when they went and they had time for themselves, away from the kids, away from the issues for themselves. And this is where they spoke about everything they had to talk about, or maybe at night, you know, but that's a different issue. So building on what you have said with, with uh, Apostle Phyllis, please schedule time with your partner, whatever, in whatever way possible, do things together. Kidnap him, kidnap her, take her somewhere, you know, and show them that, yes, you do care and that you want to hear. And even though your schedule is crazy, it's not as crazy as not to prioritize your family. Awesome. Thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to the end of this show. Uh, we talked about, we are talking about the laws of a marriage, we say number one is priority. Number two is pursuit. We have read from Genesis chapter two, verse 24 and 25. So number one, priority. Number two, law of pursuit. Number three, the law of sharing. Number four, the law of transparency. So we are done with the four laws. We are giving you a bonus law as usual. And this is the law of the tongue. Your mouth. If you are breaking this law, this is what is causing your marriage not to work properly. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. The tongue can either kill you or kill the relationship or it can make the relationship to have life. Where possible, ask for forgiveness. Learn to say, I am sorry. Learn to say, thank you. Thank you. I am sorry. Forgive me. I know it's not easy for most men because men, we have an ego. It's not easy for most men to say, I'm sorry. But by God's grace, I've trained myself to say, I'm sorry. I can say, I'm sorry to my wife. I can say, I'm sorry to my children. I can say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to my team members in the workplace. It's important. You cannot pretend to be you are Jehovah. You are not Yahweh. You are just a human being. There are also women who can't ask for forgiveness. They mess up and they want to cover it up and they will blame their partner. It's not right. Your tongue can build your home or your tongue can actually destroy your home. This is another law. You must observe it. To learn to say, I love you every single day. Remember, it's not like I bought you flowers one week ago. Uh -uh. <laughs> those flowers my friend they are gone today is today what are you doing today do you love me today tell me compliment my dressing today tell me i look good today your tongue you can't say ah you know i just spoke bad to my spouse it's just today only <clears throat> all this time i've been a very good husband why are you so angry 
I always do good things for you. It's only today when I say to this joke, uh -uh. wrongs are wrong. Be careful with your tongue. You could build a happy home for 20, 30 years, and in a flick of a second, you destroy everything. So let's be careful with our tongue. Apostle Phyllis. <laughs> That's true. I think you have said it all. Okay. <laughs> all right. She feels I've said it all. Dickiness Vesna. I'm happy. I think we've done a really amazing job uh, talking about these things. Honestly, about marriage and relationship, you could probably go all day. But yes. we should leave it for another situation. Yes. Because yes. there's plenty more to talk about. And um, definitely, like, we should probably have a the show about how to keep the marriage alive and i think you you have already talked about it a little bit yeah with uh, yeah. apostle phyllis mm. um so yeah wonderful i definitely agree with the tongue the tongue issue and compliments compliments thank you so good. much thank you and, and guess what we are talking about on sunday next week we're talking about uh, marriage yeah. <laughs> we'll be talking about marriage and this time we are going deeper Wonderful. we are going to look at the 14 P's of sex in marriage 14 who? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are going to be talking about the 14 P's P like P 14 P's of oh, sex oh like a letter P marriage. okay yes Sex in marriage. We want to talk about sex because we have been postponing it for the longest time. You know, it's not always easy to talk about sex, but it's important because if we have family and friends who believe in what we are teaching and we are talking about marriage and sex is one of the major things that is destroying homes. So we have talked about communication. We have talked about human relations. We have talked about all kinds of things. We need to talk about sex. And next Sunday is the day. All right. Let's see how the our Lord viewership. Yes. Yes. Lord bless you. Yes. Yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, I want to pray with those who want to receive Jesus for the first time. You backslid or you have never said Jesus come into my heart. You need to say it with your own mouth so that God can forgive you. Jesus becomes your friend. Can you pray after me and say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. And on the third day, he rose to give me victory, to give me salvation, to give me healing and deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. From today, I become a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Congratulations. You are born again. We are so excited. Amen. In heaven, angels are celebrating right now mm -hmm. your salvation from today. You need to grow in your spirit. You need to study the word every single day. You need to pray. And we, we are willing to help you with that. We have designed some forms. We have a prayer request form, which we are going to put under this video. We also have testimony forms. We have other forms that we will share with you. And we'll be very happy to pray with you. If you have just received Jesus, please send us an inbox to say you have received Jesus so that we can support you to grow. The Lord bless you. I would like to ask Deaconess Vesna to speak a blessing on all that they have received Jesus right now and our friends and family who have been following us that the Lord may bless them. Thank you so much, Apostle Robert. Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I ask you now to bless all our viewers and especially the people who have received Jesus right now at this moment. Oh Lord, give them strength Keep them fresh, keep them, keep them alive in Jesus. Don't let them stray to the right or the left. Help them to study the word, help them to grow, help them to grow from children into grown people in Christ, in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, I also want to pray right now for all the people who are struggling with marriage right now. I want you to know that this is just passing, that everything can be can be figured out, everything can be solved, the managers can be mended. So I speak the blessing of mending of the family upon your life right now. I speak the blessing of unity, strength, harmony, love, compassion. And may the Lord Jesus bless you and keep you and strengthen you.
for the rest of your lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Deaconess Vesna. The Lord bless you. you. Everybody who has been watching us today, we are so grateful. May the Lord honor you. May the Lord remember you. Please share the link so that more people will benefit. Hallelujah. Our God Amen. is an excellent God. He has done all things well. We have announced that any couple can have a happy marriage. Any Amen. couple can be happy. Please don't break these laws of marriage and you are going to enjoy yourself. The Lord bless you. We love you. Deaconess Vesna connecting all the way from Spain. The Lord bless you. Please, I bless know you. Borut will be helping us in the background. Uh, please yes. thank <laughs> Borut for us. The Lord bless you. Thank you. Bye. We love you. Thank you. <laughs>